hello everyone so now the next topic is light so it's the continuity of uh, the topic of waves but uh, we have already discussed the general properties of wave in 3.1 now it's 3.2 and it's about the light so we will discuss about the light in terms of uh, waves so we have to discuss four subtopics number one it will be about the reflection of light reflection of light then it will be refraction of light then it will be about the lenses thin lenses and then we'll discuss about the dispersion of light so these are the four topics one two three and four these are the four topics that we have to discuss uh, in this video first of all we'll discuss about what is the reflection of light then refraction then about the lenses and in the end we'll discuss about the dispersion so let's go over it by uh, one by one so number one it's about the reflection of light reflection of light so in this topic we have to discuss how the light like what is reflection or how the light reflects so let's suppose if we have a shiny polished surface for example uh, let me just draw let me just select a color okay so let's suppose this is a shiny polished surface it's a shiny polished surface it could be mirror as well but I'm just saying it generically it's a shiny polished surface so on this shiny polished surface let's suppose a light ray a light ray hits the shiny polished surface let me just darken a bit um, there you go so a light ray hits this shiny poly surface now this light ray will be called the incident ray now after hitting this surface it will reflect it will reflect like this like that so now this ray will be called the reflected ray so this process is representing the reflection now the line over here like in the middle this line over here in the middle this is considered to be the normal there you go so that's the normal line this is the normal line or sometimes it is also called as the perpendicular but I'm gonna call it normal now the angle that has been formed bet between the incident ray and the normal that angle is over here and this angle is called the angle of incidence and I'll represent it with I with a cap sign on it and the other angle that has been formed between the normal and the reflected ray right over here I'll represent it with R with the cap sign on it so this is the angle of reflection this is the angle of incidence now remember 
about this normal line this normal line is at 90 degree with a surface with a shiny polished surface so this angle over here is of 90 degrees so this angle over here is of 90 degrees similarly this angle over here will also be equal to 90 degrees so i is, is being represented for the angle of incidence and r is being represented for the angle of reflection now there are two main important things that you have to note note in this phenomenon in the in the reflection in the reflection you see over here this point over here the incident ray the normal ray and the reflected ray they all meet at the same point so this is the first law of reflection it says the incident ray the normal line and the reflected ray they all meet at the same point so this is the first law of reflection now similarly there is another law of reflection which says that the angle of incidence which is this angle that's the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so this is the angle of reflection so this angle of incidence and this angle of reflection they are equal so whenever reflection takes place the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection so these are the two rules that you have these are the two laws that you have to remember in reflection now we'll check we'll try the reflection in case of in case of the mirror so let me just erase it but uh, before that i want to write down the two laws of uh, reflection number one i'll write over here it says law number one for the reflection it says the incident ray the normal and the reflected ray will be at one point so this is the first law of reflection the incident ray the normal ray and the reflect reflected ray they will be at one point and this is that point now second law of reflection i'll write it over here so the second law of reflection is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so this is the second law of reflection the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection now you see over here as we have already discussed this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection so these two angles are equal always in reflection all right so now we will discuss we will see the reflection in mirror reflection of light in a mirror so this is the this is just the normal reflection like reflection in, with a shiny polished surface now we'll discuss the reflection in a mirror so let me just erase it a bit all right reflection in a mirror you have to understand it very carefully so i'll go slowly 
reflection and a mirror reflection of light basically in a mirror so for example um, just draw a straight line let's suppose this is a mirror that's the mirror an object has been placed over here this is the object this is the shiny surface of the mirror that's the shiny surface of the mirror let me highlight it with some other color so that's the shiny side of the mirror I'll just point it over here that's the shiny side okay now an eye is observing this object so the position of eye is over here this is the eye so this eye is basically observing this object through the mirror okay now like virtually the image of this object is being formed on the other side of the mirror so the image is over here now we have to first of all we have to make the ray diagram but before that i want to tell you that the distance the distance from the object to the image wait a minute so the distance from the object to the mirror will be equal to the distance from the mirror to the image so this distance is equal to this distance First of all, you have to remember this. Now, this eye is basically observing this image. The eye is observing this image. The eye is not observing the object. The eye is looking right through the mirror to this image. Now we will see how the eye is virtually seeing this image, but in actual, we will see how the ray diagram will be formed. So. Over here, this is the eye. So eye is observing this image like that. But in real, the light ray comes from the object. It goes onto the mirror. Comes from the object. It goes onto the mirror. So. The light rays are coming from the object towards the mirror and after hitting the shiny surface of the mirror the light ray the light rays reflect like that and this is how the eye will see this object so this is how the reflection happens in real now one more point that you have to notice and that point is this is the incident ray this red ray is the incident ray this blue ray is the reflected ray the normal will be over here and this is the angle of incidence and over here this is the angle of reflection so all the laws of reflections reflection are applicable over here so that's how the reflection takes place in case of a mirror and this whole thing is called the ray diagram so this is it for the reflection of light this is how the reflection happens with a shiny polished surface and this is the whole phenomena through which we see the object through the mirror from our eye if you have any question you can just uh, comment in the you can just comment below and I'll answer so them. after the reflection of light 
we have to discuss refraction of light refraction of light so refraction of light happens when the light ray deviates from its path for example I'll write it over here when a light ray enters from one medium to another from one medium to another with different refractive indices I'll explain it to you later with different refractive indices then it deviates from its original path from its original path so this is called the refraction of light so for example we have a glass block this is the glass block and uh, a light ray enters into this glass block um, I'll use uh, this color a light ray enters into this glass block and instead of going straight through it it deviates from its path it goes like that so over here you see this deviation over here this deviation over here is representing the refraction so this phenomena happens in the refraction of light now in this phenomena we have to understand some more points so I'll draw another line that will be over here it's a straight line so this is called the normal this is the normal this ray over here, light ray over here is called the incident ray and this green light dark green light ray over here is called the refracted ray refracted ray not reflected refracted now we have some angles formed over here as well so the first angle is formed over here this one I represent it with I because this is the angle of incidence angle of incidence and this angle over here <coughs> sorry I represent it with R with a cap sign on it with a cap sign on it and this angle is the angle <coughs> of refraction and as you can see over here the light ray is coming from this is air and this is glass so the light ray is changing its medium it's coming from air into the glass so air is considered okay now there are two types of medium our denser medium and the rare medium denser medium and a rare medium denser medium is the one which has less refractive index Reflective index is basically the property of the material and rare denser medium is the one which has uh, more refractive index by mistake which has more refractive index and the rare medium is the one that has less refractive index so 
for different materials they have we have different refractive indices for glass iron sorry in glass diamond water air like the refractive indices are different so that's how the phenomena of refraction occurs and these are these are the concept for the denser medium the rare medium the refractive index and uh, this is how the refraction happens and incident ray hits the boundary of the object boundary of a medium and instead of moving straight it deviates from its path and it forms an angle with the normal that angle is called the angle of refraction and this angle is the angle of incidence so till now just keep that in mind and uh, now we'll discuss a refraction like in some more detail now so how can we calculate the refractive index index of any uh, of any material for example this is glass we want to calculate the refractive index of glass now we have to know that we first of all we should know like where the light is going and where the light is coming from so the light is going from air into the glass so when the light is going and air is the rare medium because it has less refractive index and glass is the denser medium because it has more refractive index so the light ray is going from air to glass so when the light ray goes from the air to glass it is going from the rare to denser medium and when this happens we use this formula to calculate the refractive index and the formula is n equals to sin i over sin r where i represent the angle of incidence r represent the angle of refraction and n is representing the refractive index so we apply this formula to find out the refractive index when the light ray goes from the rare to denser medium okay now if the light ray is coming from the denser and going towards the rare medium then we'll just switch it we'll just switch this formula so i'll write it over here the condition when the light ray is going from the denser to the rare medium so when the light ray goes from the denser to the rare medium i'll write it over here um the refractive index will be n equals to sin r over sin i so this is the formula when the light ray goes from the denser to rare medium all right so these are the things that you have to remember in the refraction of light now after this introduction of refraction after this if introduction of refraction we have to discuss the concept of the critical angle what is a critical angle and then the concept of total internal reflection and the use of that total internal reflection all right so now we have to discuss about the concept of critical angle so what is a critical angle so for that purpose i have to draw a figure over here so let's suppose we have a glass block and uh, a light ray is coming from the glass block to it is refracting basically so instead of uh, going straight let me just shift it over here so instead of this light ray to going straight it will tilt a little bit due to the refraction like this so this glass block is my denser medium and over here we have air this is glass 
So this is the denser medium. And over here, this air is the rare medium. So when the light ray is going from the glass block towards the air, it is moving away from the normal. Let me just draw the, draw the normal line over here. So this is the normal. That's the normal line. Now we're here. This is the angle of incidence. This is the angle of incidence. And this whole angle is the angle of refraction. Okay, so that's the normal situation when the light goes from the denser medium to the rare medium. Now, in, in order to understand the critical angle, this is the incident ray. If we increase the angle of incidence, like over here so that the angle of refraction becomes equal to 90 degree like this then this angle over here will be called the critical angle i'll just draw it over here so let's suppose there's a new light ray it's a new incident light ray so that its refraction looks like this. This is the refracted ray. That's the refracted ray. And this one was the incident ray. I'm going to remove it for now this as well now look the angle of incidence is this now this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction now this angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees okay so I'll draw the symbol of 90 degrees now at this instant at this instant this angle of incidence is our critical angle okay so in order like in order to write down the definition I'll just write down over here for the critical angle critical angle so critical angle it is basically it is the angle of incidence the angle of incidence when the light ray goes from denser to rare medium and the angle of refraction becomes equal to 90 degrees and the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees at that instant the angle of incidence will be our critical angle usually for the glass the critical angle is around uh, like uh, from 40 to 43 degrees it is for the glass like normally but uh, this is the definition for the critical angle that you can note down so critical angle is basically the angle of incidence that forms when the light ray goes from the denser medium towards the rare medium and the angle and at that moment the angle of refraction becomes equal to 90 degrees all right so this was the concept of critical angle now let's extend this concept and from here let's discuss the total internal reflection so I'm going to change the title over here. So total internal reflection. So total internal refract as uh, so reflection, not refraction. It's reflection. So now this is our incident ray okay and over here this is our critical angle 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the angle beyond the critical angle. I'm going to increase the angle of incidence. This is the angle of incidence. I'm going to increase this angle of incidence beyond the critical angle. So I'm going to make, draw a new light ray right over here and we will see what will happen. So I'll just draw a light ray, a new light ray basically. So, 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 so let's draw it with purple color. All right. So I'm going to increase the angle of incidence. So this is the new light ray. According to this new light ray, we have increased the angle of incidence beyond the critical angle. So now the new critical angle will, the new angle of incidence is here. So this is the new angle of incidence. I'll write I with N as a subscript. So this is the new angle of incidence. Now, instead of refraction, what will happen? The total internal reflection will happen. So this is the angle of, this is the incident ray. Now, instead of going like this or that, we will see a, tot a reflection at this point. So this will be our reflected ray. Okay. So let me just draw it. So we will see a reflected ray. There you go. All right. So now in this case, this angle is the angle of reflection. Okay. Now our new incident angle is equal to the angle of reflection and the laws of reflection will be applicable over here. All right. So this scenario is representing the total internal reflection. Our critical angle was being formed at this light ray. Now our angle of incidence has increased beyond the critical angle. So instead of showing any refraction, a reflection will be observed. And this type of reflection is called the total internal reflection. All right. So let's define it. The total internal reflection. Let me just um, remove it. Okay. So I'll write it here. Total internal reflection. So total internal reflection happens. It happens when the light ray uh, moves from denser towards rare medium. And the incident angle or the angle of incidence, the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle. So in that case, in that case, instead of refraction, instead of refraction, we observe, we observe reflection and such a reflection is known as the total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. So in this definition, you have to note down the key points. Number one, the light should move from the denser towards the rare medium. 
number one number two the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle okay I just missed writing angle over here so I'll just write it critical angle so you have to remember that the light should moves from denser towards rare medium and the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle in that case instead of refraction we observe reflection and such a reflection is called the total internal reflection right so this was the concept for the total internal reflection now about its um, applications total we observe the total internal reflection in fiber optics for the telecommunication purposes so let's discuss the fiber optics as well so the use of total internal reflection so we observe the use of total internal reflection in fiber optics so fiber optics are basically the glass tubes very thin glass tubes I'm just gonna draw them over here they are like magnified version so they're like this they're like thin glass tubes that are used to transmit the signal from point A to point B like electric signals um, the, the signals that are con that consist of light so they are thin glass tubes okay now in this fiber optics what happens is a light ray um, a light ray enters over here this is the light ray this is the light ray a light ray enters over here and instead of showing refraction it shows total internal reflection now look the normal will be over here this is the normal and this angle of incidence is exceeding the critical angle this angle of incidence is exceeding the critical angle it is greater than the critical angle so since it is greater than the critical angle so instead of showing any refraction on this uh, on these sides it will show total internal reflection so it will show reflection so it will reflect like this there you go let me just adjust it like that so these two angles this the angle of incidence this will be the angle of reflection so these two angles are same okay so this process keeps on going on and on and on and the signal is transmitted from point A to point B so let's repeat this process so it will start from here it will go it will hit here and at this point again total internal reflection will take place this is the normal this is the normal over here total internal reflection will take place you see over here I have to adjust it um, like that again this is the normal total internal reflection will take place the light ray will go from here so you have seen that the light ray has moved from point A to point B and in this way the signal has been transmitted from point A towards point B at the speed of light that is fastest in the world okay so the signal has been transmitted from point A towards point B at the speed of light so that's why it is used in communication and uh, where we need very rapid communication so so that the signal moves with the speed of light so the communication will be done at the fastest speed so that purpose for that purpose we use this concept in the fiber optics and all our internet cables they are made up they are made up of fiber optics so that the the communication is is done at the speed of light all right so this is the application of total internal reflection so this is done for the total internal reflection and now we'll discuss about the lenses so now we have to discuss about the lenses 
so basically there are two type of lenses there are two types of lenses one is the converging lens and the other one is the diverging lens we usually call the converging lens to be the convex lens and the diverging lens to be concave lens okay so these are the two type of lenses that we have to discuss all right so let's discuss the converging lens first of all so about the converging lens or we can say it the com uh, convex lens it looks like this that's the shape of the converging lens like that all right let me just draw it uh, properly it looks like this so that when a ray of light for example the ray um, let me just draw a straight line over here that's the center of the lens okay now some rays of light are coming into the lens like this these are the rays of light I'm just drawing a few but uh, usually they are like infinite rays of light so these are the rays of light that are coming from the left side in this direction like that and after passing through the lens all the rays of light will converge they will meet at a single point for example this is the point so all the rays of light will converge right over here there you go like this So all of the rays of light they are converging at a single point. Now this point over here, this point over here, this is called the focal point. And this is the function of the converging lens. So a converging lens a converging lens converges the light rays at a single point now that particular point over here is called the focal point the length from the center of the lens to the focal point this length over here this length is called the focal length all right and the line that is passing through the middle of the lens and through the focal point that straight line right over here this line is called the principal axis that one so this point over here is called the principal axis all right principal axis so these are the things that you have to remember for the converging lens it converges the light rays these are the light rays it converges all the light rays onto a single point and this point is called the focal point 
the length from the center of the lens to the focal point is called the focal length and the line that is passing through the middle of the lens and through the focal point is called the principal axis and this is the shape of the converging lens All right now we have to discuss about the diverging lens how a diverging lens look like and uh, it is basically the opposite of the converging lens the converging lens converge converges all the light rays onto a single point but the diverging lens on the other hand it basically let me just erase it all so let's discuss about the diverging lens or we can say concave lens so the diverging lens look like this it looks like this it is thinner from the center and thicker from the edges okay um, let me just redraw it it's not properly drawn like that so it is uh, thinner from the middle and thicker from the edges so such a lens is called the diverging lens now the light rays let me just draw the center of the lens so this is the center of the lens that's the center of the lens and the light rays are entering into the lens like this these are the light rays they're coming into the lens now instead of converging they will diverge so these light rays will move away from each other <clears throat> like this like that so this is the divergence these light rays are diverging uh, while passing through the lens so such a lens is called the diverging lens now you see these are the light rays they're coming from left to right after passing through the lens they're diverging in all the directions so that's why it is used to div diverge the light rays so I'll write it down diverging lens diverges the light rays when they pass through the lens and they pass through it so this is basically the basic introduction of the types of lenses that we have the converging lens and the diverging lens now the next thing that we have to discuss is uh, the ray diagram in the lenses so we'll form a ray diagram in the lenses and uh, we will check the type of images that the lenses form all right so now we have to discuss about the ray diagram so in order to start off let's start off with the ray diagram i'll just go and draw a straight line This straight line is considered to be the principal axis. Over here. This straight line is the center of the lens. There you go. And now the distance. This is the center of the lens. The distance from here to here is f like one focal length and the distance from the same distance from here to here is 2f we can say the double of focal length so the distance from this point to this point is one focal length and the distance from this point to this point is another focal length so that's why this total distance is called the double of focal length okay now same goes on the other side as well 
so from here to here it's f now so from here to this point somewhere here this is our f all right and here is 2f okay now let's suppose we have an object and I place the object right over here this is the object and on the left side we have the object and we want to observe its image onto the right side so the image of this object will be formed on this side this will be the image and this will be the object if the object is on the left side of the lens and the image is formed on the other side of the lens then the nature of such image will be real we will call it a real image now we will see which type of image will be formed in this case real image and the other type of image is the virtual image so let's see which type of image will be formed over here now I'm just gonna draw a straight line from the object towards the lens there you go and then this line will pass through the focal length I'll just redraw it there you go and I'll draw another line that will pass through the object and through the center of the lens now look at this the point where these two lines will meet with each other at that point the image of this object will be formed okay so the image has formed on the other side so this will be the image this is the arrow now we have to decide the nature of this image so this is our object I have represented the object by an arrow and over here we have the image now number one the type of image since the object is on the left side and the image has been formed on the right side so the type of the image is a real image number two its uh, orientation is it upright or inverted so you see over here on the left side the arrow is pointing in the upward direction but the image is pointing in the downward direction so this is an inverted image it's not upright it's an inverted image number three size of the image now on the left side you see the size of the image is two lines from the principal axis two lines above from the principal axis but on the right side the size of the image is little bit bigger okay so the size is enlarged or magnified so these are the three three nature of um, this type of image so this, this is what happens when an object is um, placed before the double of focal length. The image will be bigger, the image will be inverted and the type of the image will be real. Okay, So these are the three characteristic of the image and these are the like characteristic of, an, of a real image. Now we will place the object in such a way that our the image that will be formed will be an inverted image sorry it will be an a virtual image so let's see how a virtual image will be formed I'm gonna erase it and I'll change the position of the object and then we will check what type of image will be formed and we are trying to form uh, a virtual image so I'm gonna place the object between the center of the lens and the focal length over here so that's my object okay 
So the light ray from the top of the object will go into the lens. From here, it will reach the focal point and then just go straight. Now over here, from the top to the center, from the center, straight. That's not a straight line, let me just try to do it like that. Now you see, these two lines will never ever intersect with each other because they are diverging lines, they are going away from each other. So they will never ever intersect with, with each other. So I'm gonna try to, in, like, I'm um, just try to intersect them on the same side where the object is. So I'll try to intersect them on this side, like that. So you see, these lines will intersect on this side. So this is the point of intersection. Of these lines so my image will be formed on the same side where the object is all right so this is the image now this type of image is called a virtual image why because the object and the image they are on the same side of the lens it's not on this side it's on the same side so such an image is called a virtual image now let's write down the characteristic of this image number one type so the type of image is virtual because it has formed on the same side where the object is number two size it's enlarged or magnified image Number three, the orientation, how it has been oriented. So it is upright position. It's not an inverted image. It's in the upright position. So this is the same phenomena that is used in the magnifying glass. So in the magnifying glass, what happens is we observe some object on this side and our eye is on this side. This is our eye. So we are observing something from this side. So this is the object and we will see the image of the same object on the same side of the lens. But that the size of the image is bigger than the object. So in this way, we use the magnifying glass. So the image that is formed in a magnifying glass is a virtual image. It is upright and uh, it is an enlarged image. All right, so after this, we have to discuss about the linear magnification. What is the linear magnification? So as you can see over here, the size of the image and the size of the object. Let me just erase this ray diagram, light rays. So this is the size of the object. For example, it is two centimeter and this is the size of the image for example it is one two three four five centimeters now the linear magnification is means how much image has been magnified okay so that is basically the linear magnification so i'll write it over here linear magnification is equal to the image height divided by the object height. Now over here the image height is 5 cm and the object height is 2 cm. So I'll just do 5 divided by 2 that will become equal to 2.5. So in this case the linear magnification is 2.5 which means the image the object has been enlarged by 2.5 times. All right. 
so this is how we calculate the linear magnification now we have to discuss something about the eye the human eye like the normal eye we have to discuss about the short-sighted eye and the long-sighted eye all right so now we have to discuss about the uh, defects of eye so defects of eye and how can we correct those defects by using these converging and diverging lenses all right so this is the structure of eye okay this is the lens it, in this case there are two important things lens and the retina so this nerve over here that we see this membrane this is the retina so what happens is the light rays are coming from outside they're falling onto the lens and after being converging from the lens they are falling onto the retina like this if all the light rays focus on the retina like this then this is a correct eye there is no defect in this eye but if they focus before the retina like this or if they focus somewhere behind the retina then there is defect and we'll there are two type of defected eyes we can uh, that we are going to discuss in the next slide right so in this case you have to remember only the lens and this portion retina okay here you go short-sighted eye what is a short-sighted eye short-sighted eye basically short-sightedness we usually call it it's basically um with the short-sightedness we see the object that are, that replace that replace close to us we are not able to see the object that replace far away from us okay so a person can only see the object close to him and uh, he will not be able to see the object that are away from him that are far from him so that is called the short-sightedness long-sightedness on the other hand is uh, a disease you can say where the person can see the far objects clearly but the object that are placed close to the person he will not be, be able to see it properly right so let's see what happens in the short-sighted eye now over here this is the retina so these light rays that are converging these are the light rays these light rays are entering into the lens and this lens is converging these light rays at this particular point where it is supposed to converge the all the light rays on the retina so you see the light rays are not being converged on the retina they are convert they are being converged at this particular point so there's a defect and such type of defect where the light rays are converged in front of the retina that's called the short-sightedness now we have to converge these light rays onto the retina okay over here so for that purpose in order to correct it we use the concave lens so what happens in the concave lens the light rays they enter into the concave lens the concave that concave lens diverges them a bit and then the natural lens of the eye it converges all the light rays right onto the retina when all the light rays are converged on the retina then the image is formed clear and that image will go through the optic optic nerve to the brain and the brain will be able to process it properly so that is how we correct the short-sightedness now on the other hand let's discuss the long-sightedness so opposite happens in the long-sightedness the light rays are coming from the object into the eye and the lens of the eye are converging those light rays behind the retina the retina is over here this is the retina they're supposed to converge over here but these light rays are converging behind the retina so such people they are able to see the objects that are placed far from them but they are not able to see the object that are placed close to them now in order to correct this defect we use a convex lens so what will happen all the light rays that are coming in towards towards the eye the convex lens it will converge them a bit 
and upon more convert like and and the lens of the eye will converge them further due to which all the light rays will be able to converge themselves right onto the retina and this will become our corrected image because all the light rays are being converged onto the retina so a corrected image a clear image will be formed onto the retina that will be able to process um, by the brain quite easily so these are the two defects that you have to remember and uh, these are the two methods by which we we can correct these two lenses by using a convex lens and a concave lens all right so now we have to discuss about the dispersion of light so let me just define it first like what is the dif uh, dispersion of light so dispersion of light means when the light is divided into its constituent colors after passing through the mediums with different refractive indices refractive indices so such a scenario is called the dispersion of light when the light is divided into its constituent colors now how does a light is divided you know white light it is basically consists of se seven colors violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red whip cure we call it as a mnemonic so when white light passes through a prism it divides into its constituent colors and this process is called the dispersion of light so how does it happen and or why does it happen uh, we will you know to understand it we'll draw a small prism and we'll try to pass the white light and we'll check how is it being divided so let's suppose we have a prism like this white light is entering into the prism from this side this is the white light that is entering into the prism now that white light will be divided into its constituent colors why because as the white light enters it's not a single uh, you know single colored light it's a multicolored light because white light is cons consist of like seven colors so it will disperse first of all um, I'll just put this ray over here okay so first of all it will be like this this is the red color There you go. Then comes because la uh, red color will be dispersed like a very little. Okay. And then comes the orange color. It will be deflected slightly more than the red color. Then comes the yellow color. Like that. Then green. There you go. Then comes blue. And in the end, we have this is blue. In the end, we have indigo or violet color, like that. There you go. Now, what happened over here? Red has the maximum wavelength. Red color has the maximum wavelength so it has deflected lesser because it has been entered from a rare medium into a denser medium so this is air 
and this is glass so the white light has entered from a rare to a denser medium so the light with the maximum wavelength will deflect less and light with the minimum wavelength will deflect more okay so that's why because the red light has the maximum wavelength and the violet or violet color has the minimum wavelength so that's why the wallet in a uh, wallet color will deflect more and the red color will deflect less okay so it depends the deflection of the light rays depends on the wavelength okay now it has been spreaded because the speed of the light ray has been reduced now when the light ray goes from the rare medium to the denser medium the speed of the light ray will increase and we will see more deflection more dispersion so this will be like it will go straight like this there you go and then comes blue it goes straight then green it will go like that then yellow there you go then orange and in the end we will see the red color I have deflected orange a bit more it should be lesser than that so there you go so that's how the dispersion of light happens in a prism and in simple words the dispersion of light is basically the spreading of light when it passes through the medium of different refractive indices so the light the white light has been traveled from the denser and from the rare medium to the denser medium and then it spread it into its constituent colors and those constituent colors again move from the um, denser medium towards the rare medium this is the denser medium towards the rare medium and it further divides into it showed some deflection and those deflection depend on their wavelengths the one with maximum wavelength has the minimum deflection and the one with the minimum wavelength has the maximum deflection so this is it for the section of light now in the next section of next subsection of the waves we have to discuss about the electromagnetic spectrum so we'll discuss that in our next video